Democratic Republic of Congo is on high alert for the threat of another volcanic eruption. You can see ash rising from the volcano's crater here. A local official said 92 earthquakes were recorded in the area within a 24-hour period. The region on edge following a deadly eruption more than a week ago. The lava flow swallowing up homes, roads, pretty much everything in its path. The deputy head of the UN's peacekeeping force in Congo says more than a billion dollars is needed to repair the damage. Well, Larry uh, Madowu is seeing some of the destruction in the city of Goma, and he joins me now live. Uh, I know that you took to the air to see the volcano's crater for yourself. I mean, the shot that you've got uh, behind you, um, you know, it is pretty devastating. Um, what did you see when you got up above? Becky, we saw the genesis of what we have here, which is the lava, and these used to be people's homes under this field of lava. But from the sky, we saw where that red-hot lava flo flowed from, essentially. It's been replaced now by grey ashes. That, experts tell us, is probably a good sign. It means that the crater is collapsing and there's nothing under there, so there's no imminent danger. However, experts from the Goma Volcanic Observatory did two flyovers today, but they also did pick up some fissures in, in, in there. They did pick up some little holes here and there that appear to be the beginning of something. There's not a lot to make of that at this point, but what they're telling people is to be vigilant that they're not ruling out the possibility that there could be a ground eruption or a water eruption. One of the people we flew, out, we flew with yesterday is uh, Dario Tedesco, who has been studying this mountain since 1995. And obviously people are looking to him to say, is this all over? This is his response. Not ruling out the possibility of another eruption. I'm thinking and I'm saying that the, uh, statistically, there is very few chances that this can happen. So what that means is that the danger appears to be fine because people are tired of being displaced, they're trying to come back home, but we cannot assure you that you're safe if you come back home. The ground might explode, the water might explode. The deputy head of the UN's peacekeeping, um, estimating, Larry, that to date, damage will cost more than a billion dollars to repair. And we're talking about roads, water, electricity supply. And, and, and for a little context for our viewers, that's something like the equivalent of 2% of the country's GDP. I mean, how are those rebuilding efforts likely to play out at this point? I mean, how are people going to cope in the, in the near to medium term? The immediate concern is preserving life, which is keeping people away mm. from another eruption if it happens. Right now, humanitarian agencies are trying to make sure they have food and shelter and medicines and that there's no outbreak of COVID-19 or cholera, which has broken out here in the past. And then people don't have homes. Like the woman who lived next door, her home is under this. How does she even start? She didn't have insurance. She didn't, she, she might not get, get any government support. And there's so many other stories like that. 900 homes were completely flattened by this. 80,000 people, 80,000 households have been displaced by this. If there's another eruption, it could be catastrophic. So the UN peacekeeping mission here has told us that they will need international partners to try and rebuild what's left in this part of the Eastern DRC. That's several years away, hoping there's no other eruption in that time. Yeah, Larry Maduro is on the story for you. Larry, thank you.